Okay, we are finally back on the Tesla coil, and uh, I do apologize for it taking so long. Um, it was, man, months ago. Months ago since the last one, but uh, thank you for being patient, thank you for coming back, and I think this time we are going to work on these two transformers right here. So this is taking the uh, high voltage line, it's an 8 gauge wire, from the capacitor bank that we did... I don't know if it was last video or two videos ago, but uh, from this guy right here. So coming from here, we go through two uh, transformers, and then from there, that continues out to the primary coil. Now those two transformers are reporting back to the controller. So you can buy those transformers from Eastern Voltage Research. Uh, they're the people I got these schematics from. You can buy the, the, the ones that are made, ready to go, or you can buy a kit, or you can buy individual parts to make them yourself. For each one, you will need two coils, or not coils, two um, donuts like that, and you will need um, 1853 wire. That's the uh, part number they specifically call for. This is a 26 gauge, 26? Um, yeah, 26 gauge. Uh, rated for 600 volts. Now, as far as the um, the uh, the cores here, I bought some cheaper ones on eBay. It was like a pack of 10 for like 3 or $4. But they were a little bit skinnier, a little bit smaller in diameter. And when I first bought them, um, you know, I actually bought the right ones from Eastern Voltage off their website. They're like $1.50 each. And you'll need five of them for the whole Tesla coil. Um, but I bought the correct ones because after I bought those cheap eBay ones, I watched a video of somebody making coils, and he made three identical coils, but the difference was he used three different cores. And when I say identical, I mean the wire and the number of wrappings was the same. The cores were different, and uh, all three performed differently. So those ones I bought from China probably would have worked, but I don't want to. I don't want to trust that probably would have been okay. Um, here's the thing. Like I said, I'm not an engineer. I did not design this. So I want to deviate as little as possible. I'm already deviating by using a different IGBT than what they call for and using different uh, capacitors, uh, the, the big capacitors. Now, I did contact Eastern Voltage, and they told me that what I'm going to use should work perfectly fine. Um, so except for that, that I did get you know, some word on that it should use, that it should work. Other than that, I'm going to stick to the design as designed. Uh, because if I start changing everything, and then if the thing doesn't, then if the thing doesn't work, I don't know what is going to be faulty. You know what I mean? Like if I change 10 things and the thing doesn't work, well, which one of those 10 things that I changed is causing the problem? If I build it as spec, as designed, that is a proven design, then it should work perfectly fine. And um, so again, a dollar fifty each for five total. I think it's it's worth it. It's not that much money. Um, now, if they if they would have been twenty dollars each, you know, if they would have been twenty dollars each, um, and then I get a bag of ten for like two dollars from China. Yeah, I'll try the China ones. Uh, but for as little as we're talking about, I'm going to stick with these. So, anyways, for each one of those, we'll need two of those, and we'll need the wire. Uh, now, I already cut some wire. Um, I measured out and cut two lengths. We've got, um, we've got one length of wire that is 75 and a half, 76 inches long, and then another wire that is about 52 inches long. And um, I'm going to start with the longer one first. I think that would be the easiest thing to do. I'm just going to mark off 12 inches. I just put a mark there. So I have a 12 inch length here. And that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to take one of these. I'm going to feed that through. And at the 12 inch mark, the 12 inch mark, I'm just going to pinch it off right there. I'm going to wrap this around. Take my long length.
and feed it through. Now you want to try to make it tight around, so I'm gonna push that and bend it, push it, and then as I pull that through, push it, and then kind of pull that a little bit tight, and then bend and around. So there's one turn, 31 more to go. And uh, it's fairly tedious and time consuming, but it's not too bad. Now I could have, and you don't want to let the wire kink, that is one thing to watch out for. You don't want to put a kink in the wire um, as you're going around there. Now obviously every turn you do, the wire gets an inch shorter. Um, so it gets a little bit easier to manage. Now one thing that I could have done and would probably have been easier is mark the wire right in the middle and put half of it through and then wrap one around half the turns and the other one around half the turns. Um, that probably would have been better. And right now, I'm not even counting the turns. I'm just gonna go until I have about 12 inches left on the other side and then I'll count the turns. And um, it should be pretty close. So what I did, um, I saw from the uh, from the plans that, and I'm trying to not let that kink. I saw from the plans that it takes 32 turns, but they don't tell you how long of a piece of wire to start with. So what I did was I just wrapped a piece around one time and I measured it, I measured it, and then I multiplied that by 32, and then I added 12 inches for each end and uh, cut the wire to that length. And that gets me pretty close. Now I rounded up all the dimensions because I'd rather be too long than too short. So I rounded everything up and um, this should then work out pretty well. All right, now I've got quite a bit to go. That's what it's looking like so far. So uh, like I said, I got a lot more to do, so I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'll come back to you when this one is done. All right, and that's what it looks like. Now, they're not evenly spaced. I can kind of squish those around and get them better uh, a little bit later. And they don't have to be perfectly evenly spaced. It just looks better if they are. Uh, but I got 32 wraps around there. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these wires and I'm gonna start twisting them together. And just like that. Now, like I said, I left these 12 inches long, and that's probably too long. Uh, technically, they should be as short as possible, um, but I don't know exactly where I'm gonna mount it, and I don't know exactly where I'm going to mount the controller, but I'm going to try to get them as close to each other as possible to keep this to keep these leads short. All right, now, um, before I continue, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna put a little heat shrink on that. Something I have noticed with this wire is that um, the coating can burn off pretty easily. The first time I put some heat shrink on one of these, it just fried right through the, uh, through the insulation. So make sure the um, temperature on your heat gun is turned down just enough so it'll do the heat shrink but not damage the um, the insulation of the wire. So let me go get some heat on that and shrink it down and I'll get right back with you. You know something I see all the time that just really bugs me and that's using a, um, a lighter to, to shrink heat wrap, heat shrink. You know just get a proper heat gun I mean, people do it all the time. I'm sure I've done it. You know, I'm sure I've used a lighter years ago or in a pinch when I didn't have a heat gun. But um, I've seen people on YouTube, on channels, where they're doing electrical work all the time. They're using heat shrink all the time. And they always use a lighter, right? If you're doing it that often, just get a proper heat gun. Um, I don't know why it bugs me so much. It just does. So anyways, um, and if you're one of those people who uses a lighter all the time, you know, no offense. I'm sure it works out fine for you. It's just my, you know, one of my little things that bugs me. Everybody has 
you know, everybody has a little thing that bugs them. Okay, so anyways, um, let me finish twisting these together. And, um, and then we'll work on the other half, because we are basically halfway done with this thing. And since I rounded up all my dimensions, you can see that one leg was 12 inches. The other leg ended up being uh, quite a bit longer. So we can go ahead and just cut that off. Okay, so there's half of the uh, half of the unit right there. For the other one, where's my other? There it is. Grab my other wire here. Uh, so for this one, I think I'll try what I suggested earlier. Put that in the middle, and then we'll uh, wrap 16 turns with one line, and then 16 turns with the other. And again, it's going to be just like what we saw with the other one. So I'm not going to make you watch me do all 32 turns of this. And you see here, if you're not careful, if I continue to pull that, it's going to put a kink in that wire. Don't want that to happen. So undo all those kinks as you're pulling it. And uh, there you go. There's one. So let me turn the camera off and we'll get back to you when this one's ready to go. Okay, now one thing different about this one, uh, we want to go ahead and wrap all the way to the end. And I'm going to go and just trim that just a little bit shorter here. Like that. And I'm just going to tape that down. I'm just going to tape that down so it doesn't unravel. Then we'll start with the other side. We'll, we'll see why that's like that here in a little bit. So we'll go ahead and just start with this other side. Wrapping it around. All right, so I have a little bit left to go here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. And we're now going to add the other coil. Because what we need to do is pass this one time through that one that we did before and then start wrapping again. Just like that. And then we'll just continue wrapping. All right, so as you can see, the 32 windings of this one, one of those windings passes through this one. I'm going to keep winding this until I get 32 turns, and we're going to connect the two ends. All right, so that's 32 turns around, and uh, we have that much extra. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Actual cutters here, so of scissors. And we need to start scooching that around so it meets up with the other one. So let me untape. All right, so like that we need to strip the insulation off of those two ends. And uh, typically for stuff like that, I just use a, um, an X-Acto, just like that. And now just to help keep these things from fraying out, there's both of them stripped there. But just to help keep these things from, from uh, loosening up, I'm just going to put some tape on the sides that it's like that and I'm going to do something else that I probably don't need to do but I'm going to do it just because it seems like a thing to do I'm going to put some Kapton tape under it again this is probably completely waste of time but like I said it just seems like a proper thing to do even though I know it's not um, but I'm going to put capped on tape under where I'm going to solder those together and again don't ask me why I'm doing this and then that'll come down That'll go down. And to help hold them down, I'm going to put another piece of uh, tape. Just to kind of hold that down like that. And then another piece of tape. like that. 
and that will hold those together while I solder them. So uh, let me go solder that in together and we'll come back and see what it looks like. All right, so it's not the nicest looking solder joint I've ever done, but it'll work. So let's take this off, take the tape off. Nothing should unravel now. And I'm actually going to leave that Kapton tape underneath of it. Again, it's probably not serving a purpose. Um, but I don't care. And then we'll scooch the wires around so it looks evenly spaced-ish. Good enough. It doesn't have to be perfect. But that is, right there, that is a completed coil. So again, the 8-gauge wire passes through here, and that gets magnified 32 times, which then passes through here, which gets magnified 32 times, which then comes out of here and goes to the controller. So um, at this point, it's kind of loose and floppy. You could, at this point, just zip tie this to your structure. Uh, now the ones that you buy, uh, they're typically just mounted on a piece of circuit board, obviously with a hole drilled through it. Um, I've seen a few different ways you can manage this. But let me show you what I did. So I 3D printed a little uh, holder for it. And my first thought was to do two of these and then sandwich them together. And I printed it in translucent blue, and I thought it would be cool to be able to see the coils inside of that translucent blue, but once you put it in, you can't see anything. Um, I also put a little notch right there, thinking the wire would just come out of there, but you'll notice I wrapped it off of that corner, so that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve that out a little bit with a drill. And that's just going to make a channel for that wire to go through. And that should work. So then this is going to go in here. Just like that. Kind of lost my even spacing, but that's okay. It'll work if they're not perfectly spaced. just looks better. All right, and that goes down all the way like that, and it's a uh, tight enough fit that they're not just gonna fall out. However, um, I will put a few drops of either hot glue or clear RTV at a few points, uh, one point being like right, right in there, just to give some strain relief to that wire. So again, my first thought was to have it sandwiched like, like two of those, one on each side like that. Uh, but then you couldn't see the coils and it just, I don't know, I kind of like, I kind of like that. Once I put it in one half, I'm like, that's it. That's how I'm going to leave it. Of course, I left some mounting holes here. And of course, as I said, we need two of those. It's right here. So I made one earlier, obviously. All right, so I thought about how I wanted to attach these and connect them. And I decided to stand them apart from each other like this with little spacers in between. Before I do that though, let me get some hot glue on those to lock them in and then we will get those spacers together. So I'm gonna put some right in there. Okay, that is perfectly good enough. So, start assembling this. Screw through here. And I just realized I don't have enough screws. Put 
one there and one here. Because of course it's metric. Because why would it not be metric? I have hundreds of standard hardware and almost no metric, but those little standoffs that I just happen to have are of course metric. So I need to come up with two more screws, but that's easy to do. There's a hardware store just down the road from me. So that'll be an easy enough thing. Let me get some zip ties. And yes, they're long enough. And we'll just take one about over here. And we'll do one more. You know, just to make sure. Now, another big pet peeve of mine is not pulling zip ties tight enough and cutting them off flush. So there's one lead coming out. We'll do the same thing over here. And let me show you what I mean about cutting zip ties flush. Let me get these down. All right, so let me show you something. If you cut a zip tie like that, those will tear you up, and I am speaking from experience. You stick your hand in there, those are going to cut you up. So when you are doing zip ties, make sure you cut them flush. Because if they don't cut you, uh, they're going to cut the next guy that goes in there. Just trying to pull those a little bit tighter. I didn't pull them tight enough. They're going to cut the next guy that sticks his hand near there. So you take some flush cutters. You stick them in there and you cut them flush just like that and that's not going to hurt anybody now it only takes another second to make sure that you're flush and cut flush so that's not going to hurt you now so those are fine all right and i see people all the time just diking off these things and they're sticking out like little knife blades in there so yeah don't do that okay so I am thinking that this is done, minus the two missing screws there. So this will more than likely screw to the bottom of the plexiglass plate that is holding the primary coil. And I did that a few videos ago. It's a big 16 by 16 inch square plate. That'll screw to the top of that. The high voltage wire passes through here out to the coil, and these will then go down to the controller. All right. So one more part of the coil done. So let me, um, I'm thinking this video is getting to be way too long. So let's take a look at what's coming up next and then we will call it done for the day and we'll wait another two or three months before I, I'm joking. Hopefully I'll get another video out in a couple of weeks instead of a couple of months. But there's your feedback coils right there. Again, they could be closer together. Um, if those were half the length or maybe three quarters the length would maybe be better, but it's fine. I'm not mad at that. I kind of like it. I think it looks cool. Um, so let me put this away and let's take a look at what's coming up next. Okay, many of you may remember this from previous videos. Um, next video, what we will do is we will torque everything down. This bar here will get torqued on for good right there. And let's get rid of some of this hardware here. And you may remember this circuit board that I did in one of the previous videos. Uh, but I really need to mount, I really need to mount these capacitors. So let's get this board out of the way. So this capacitor will mount right there, and this one will mount right there, like that. Get all this in there. 
And let me get another, let me get my other lens on here. All right, a little better, maybe? So, anyways. I need to get these capacitors mounted. On the back side, there is a rather large stud and a nut. So I will make a bracket that will screw on to the back of the heat sink right here. Screw in here, comes up and bolts onto there. And then this will get bolted on somewhere right there. This circuit board will be on a standoff or a riser to hold up right above top of there. These cables go down to the um, rectifier here. And then on top of that, don't fall, on top of that, we then have the capacitor board and then a fan. So I need to build structure up to hold all of this in the right place. And of course, this will then mount up here. Um, and I still need room for the controller, for the um, solid state Tesla coil controller. Uh, one other thing here I can go ahead and show you. Um, the controller runs on 20 volts AC. So I bought... Um, I bought this. This is a wall outlet adapter. Uh, it gives you 20 volts AC. And I don't want a plug and all this stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust this apart. The first thing I'm going to do is test it. So let me get this stuff out of the way. Just get all this stuff put somewhere. We'll move this. Man, this thing's heavy. So let me plug this in and we'll check it and make sure it works. Which I think I did already, but I don't remember. All right, so we'll plug it in. And this is actually my second one from the same buyer. The first one didn't work at all. Um, I think it was damaged in shipping because I heard some stuff rattling around in there. So I told him and he was very polite, kind enough to send me a new one. Uh, no problems, no questions really. Uh, so we'll just check that. And we've got, come on. What? Seriously? 0 0.1 millivolt? That can't be right. What the heck is going on here? Why can't I get anything to work? Apparently my other meter was bad. Um, 23 volts coming out of this. So I'm actually going to bust this apart and take the transformer out of it and wire it right onto the heat sink instead of having a plug and all this stuff. So that's coming up in the next video. So again, by the next video, that big heat sink and all that stuff should be mounted and then we'll be ready to build a frame to actually start constructing the top half of this coil. So anyways, I appreciate you coming back and uh, hanging out with me again and taking a look at what I'm doing. And hopefully the next video will be out sooner than later. So anyways, as always, thanks for watching.